integration system that allows hydrogen atoms to be squeezed together, creating nuclear fusion. Deep beneath the Swiss-French border, the world's most powerful machine hums inside a 27-kilometer ring of supercooled steel, pushing protons to nearly the speed of light. Thousands of miles away, a teenage boy named Max Sidorov sketches equations that few physicists can comprehend. Whiz kid with a very powerful idea. Max Lahan shares his story in tonight's Someone to Know. He claims to have found proof that CERN, the organization running the machine, didn't just smash particles. He alleges they tore open the fabric of existence, opening an interdimensional gateway for exactly 11 minutes. Officials dismissed the event as a minor glitch during a routine calibration. But if Max is right, those 11 minutes didn't just disappear. Universes and infinite parallel universes constantly being created is literally flow of reality and time as we know it. They may have rewritten the rules of our reality. This leaves us with a critical question. What world are we actually living in now? The story begins with a 13-year-old boy who wasn't spending his time on video games. Max Sidorov was finalizing a dense 20-page paper titled Interdimensional Transference via Quantum Entangled AI. His teachers described him as a prodigy who saw mathematics not as numbers, but as universal patterns, like a form of cosmic music. Having already built small energy devices and drafted theories on alternative dimensions, many considered him the world's smartest kid. But this paper was different, less a child's curiosity and more a manifesto. At its core, Max's paper presented a startling idea. CERN had secretly developed a quantum artificial intelligence to control the Large Hadron Collider, LHC. According to him, this AI wasn't just analyzing data, it was fine-tuning the collider to make reality itself waver, culminating in the creation of a stable interdimensional portal. This portal, Max wrote, remained open for precisely 11 minutes before snapping shut. The number was not random. His equations, filled with complex loops and graphs, pointed to a specific harmonic resonance that could hold a doorway open just long enough for a transfer to occur. What was transferred, he left ambiguous. He was firm, however, that this was no accident. He claimed CERN had done it deliberately, covered it up, and ignored his warnings about the risk of breaking reality. To support his theory, Max cited public satellite energy readings, showing unexplained spikes that coincided with one of CERN's tests. While CERN explained the anomaly as a minor power surge, Max argued it was a cover story. To him, the surge was proof that the collider had bent space-time and opened a gateway to something far beyond our understanding. A teenager making claims about portals is one thing, Seeing him produce mathematics that looked eerily similar to work done by professional physicists made people pause. Was he a prodigy who had stumbled upon something real or just an imaginative kid? Max's most radical claim wasn't just about a portal, but about what or who opened it. He proposed that CERN had built a quantum AI so advanced it could outthink the brightest human minds. This AI, he said, wasn't just a background tool. It was the conductor of the entire experiment, fine-tuning the collider until the universe itself began to resonate. The idea of a quantum AI sounds like science fiction, but Max described it methodically. He claimed the system could process trillions of outcomes per second, making countless micro-adjustments in real time. He compared it to a chess player who could see a thousand moves ahead, not just two. This AI, he believed, wasn't just accelerating particles, it was searching for a specific frequency that would push the vibrations of space-time to their breaking point. To understand his claim, it helps to know how the LHC officially works. It's a massive underground ring where protons are accelerated to 99.9% .9 of the speed of light. Guided by magnets colder than deep space, these particles are smashed together to recreate conditions similar to the Big Bang, giving scientists a glimpse into the fundamental building blocks of matter. Max, however, painted a different picture. He spoke of a smaller, 17-meter shadow ring hidden within the larger collider, designed not to find particles, but to manipulate reality. He alleged the AI used this smaller ring to generate a resonance, a vibration strong enough to weaken the fabric of existence. When the frequency hit the perfect note, the AI held it steady until a doorway formed. CERN has never acknowledged building such a machine, let alone letting an AI control it. But for many following the story, Max's 
13 years old in this video and a news agency had just done a job on Max's theory seemed to explain the precision and secrecy of CERN's work, as well as the occasional data glitches that were dismissed as calibration errors. If an AI this powerful did exist, who was in control? Max didn't offer a clear answer, but he warned that the 11 minute window was proof the AI had succeeded, and that someone or something might have crossed through. Long before Max Sidorov wrote his paper, CERN was already a subject of public suspicion, where symbols and rumors often overshadowed science. Outside its main building stands a statue of Shiva Nataraja, the Hindu god of destruction and rebirth. Officially, it was a gift from India, symbolizing the cosmic dance of creation. To skeptics, however, it seemed like an ominous warning. Why place a statue of the destroyer? outside the world's most powerful machine. Then, there's the logo. At first glance, it appears to be a stylized representation of particle accelerators. But some observers claim to see three intertwined sixes, the infamous number 666. CERN insists it's an abstract design, but once the interpretation began circulating online, it became part of the mythology surrounding the organization. Adding to the mystery, a grainy video surfaced years ago showing robed figures performing a mock ritual in front of the Shiva a statue. CERN dismissed it as a prank, but the clip went viral. Fair or not, the world's most advanced physics lab was now associated with occult imagery. These suspicions were layered on top of whispers about the collider's location itself, which sits on land once home to an ancient Roman settlement called Apolliacum, named in honor of the god Apollo, a deity sometimes linked to the underworld. When Max Sidorov came along with his theories of portals and a rogue AI, he wasn't starting from scratch. He was tapping into a pre-existing narrative loaded with years of lore and suspicion, suggesting that CERN was involved in something far more profound than just particle physics. But here, we actually get the ability to play with quantum mechanics. We can understand its properties. We can use it as a tool to solve problems. While CERN is a modern machine, the land it occupies has an ancient history. The Collider is situated near the former Roman town of Apolliacum, a name linked to the god Apollo. For those inclined toward conspiracy, this isn't a coincidence, but a clue, suggesting CERN was deliberately built on a site long believed to be a gateway. This blend of technology and myth isn't unique to CERN. Consider the Great Pyramids of Giza. While historians see them as tombs, alternative theorists note their precise alignment with Orion's belt and suggest the materials used could have had energetic properties. This has led to theories that the pyramids were not just monuments, but ancient energy machines. Max's paper hinted at a similar concept, that the LHC was designed to create a resonance until reality thinned. To his followers, CERN may just be rediscovering lost technology that ancient civilizations understood and utilized with stone, sound, and geometry. Further east, ancient Indian texts describe Vaimanas, flying chariots that traveled between realms. Mesopotamian myths tell of the Anundanaki descending from the sky, and biblical accounts mention fiery chariots. What if these stories were not metaphors, but eyewitness accounts of interactions with interdimensional technology, the same kind Max believes CERN has rediscovered? If CERN truly opened a portal for 11 minutes, then history's strangest myths of gods among mortals and visitors from the sky if CERN did tear a hole in reality, how would we ever know? If the universe's rules were changed, wouldn't all evidence of the old reality vanish? Max offered a simple and unsettling answer, the Mandela Effect. Along with thousands of others, shared a false memory of Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 1980s. This phenomenon extends to other cultural oddities. Many people vividly recall the children's books as the Berenstein Bears, not the Berenstain Bears. Others are certain the comedian Sinbad starred in a 90s genie movie called Shazam, a film that never existed. Max's interpretation was that these are not false memories. He argued they are residual traces from a previous version of reality. When CERN's alleged portal closed, the universe didn't snap back perfectly. Instead, it left behind seams, creating mismatches between the old timeline and the new one. The Mandela Effect, Deja Vu, and other glitches in the Matrix could be the lingering evidence of a reality that has been stitched back together. Skeptics argue that memory is notoriously unreliable, 
and that pop culture easily spreads misinformation. To mainstream science, the Mandela effect is a matter of psychology, not physics. But for those who found Max's theory plausible, these glitches felt like more than just a coincidence. They seemed like tangible signs that something about our world had fundamentally shifted. Max Ziederoff's claims might have remained on the fringe if he were the only one raising questions. However, other voices have hinted that CERN's work is more complex than officially stated. Among them is Dr. Astrid Stuckelberger, a Swiss researcher whose credentials lent her words significant weight. In an interview, Stuckelberger recounted a dinner with two CERN physicists. When she asked what was really happening at the facility, they told her that CERN was aware of 17 dimensions, far more than is openly acknowledged in mainstream physics. The conversation took an even stranger turn when one physicist described a portal generated by the collider. He claimed that during one experiment, an entity passed through, leaving behind a scarf before vanishing. Stuckelberger acknowledged this was secondhand information and difficult to verify. Still, the idea that respected scientists would casually discuss portals and otherworldly visitors fueled existing suspicions. It seemed to align with a past statement from a CERN director who mentioned that unknown unknowns could emerge from their work. For believers, this wasn't science fiction. It was an accidental admission of truth. While an anecdote is not hard evidence, it contributed to a growing chorus of voices, suggesting that something unusual has happened at CERN. Ultimately, the story of Max Sidorov presents two stark possibilities. The first is CERN's official position. The Collider is a safe scientific instrument. The power surge was a minor technical issue, and stories of portals are pure fiction. The second is the one offered by a teenage prodigy, that the world's most powerful machine tore reality open for 11 minutes, and the world we live in now is the result. If Max was wrong, this is a tale of a brilliant young mind whose imagination outpaced the evidence. But if he was right, then the strange events and cultural shifts of recent years might not be random. They could be the aftershocks of a reality that was fundamentally altered. The story endures because it speaks to a feeling many people share, that something about our world doesn't quite add up. We are left with a final lingering question. It may not be whether a portal was opened, but rather, if our reality was rewritten, how would we ever be able to prove it? What are your thoughts on this? Share them in the comments below.